So in this video, I'm going to be taking you through how to make your own cash flow budget on Google Sheets in 10 minutes, if not 10 minutes on the dot. This is the simplest kind of budget you can make. All you have to do every month is import your transactions from your bank account and categorize them and your budget automatically updates. You can also make a similar spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel as well. I've just used Google Sheets because it's probably the most accessible software to use right now and it's backed up on the cloud, which means you will hopefully never lose it. As I said at the beginning of the video, once you actually set this up, it's really easy to just keep it going and it just gets easier every month you do it. I have got more videos coming on how to create a net worth tracker, how to also track your investments in Google Sheets because there are really cool ways to do that, how to create a debt tracker and basically some really cool ways to jazz up this spreadsheet because we love a good spreadsheet on this channel. Hope you enjoy this video and I really hope it takes under 10 minutes. So we're gonna start with an empty spreadsheet. I'm just gonna call this a finance tracker and we've got four main tabs that we'll need. So that's a summary tab, which will show the totals for our budget and actuals, and basically just a really quick summary as to if we're up or down on our budget. Our budget tab, which is the only tab you'll have to adjust now. After creating this sheet, you'll hopefully never have to really touch this until you're updating your budgets and actually increasing them or lowering them based on like a yearly review or something your actuals. So your actuals is completely formula driven and I will teach you how to do this in this video, but you don't touch your actuals after we set it up in this video and it will just kind of summarize the cash flow transactions which get put into the cash flow tab. So the cash flow tab is where we will paste in our transactions once we download them from our bank. So with bank accounts, there is an option to download your statement and you can download this in different formats. I would recommend downloading it in an Excel format and basically just pasting certain columns, which I'll take you through in the video, into the cash flow tab and categorizing them ourselves. So this can be the only part of this routine, which is kind of annoying and time consuming, but it's not even that time consuming. It will take 10 minutes max. So for our budget, we're just at the top going to do our months. So I'm just gonna type in Jan and drag this across. And then I'm just gonna categorize our actual spending plot. So I'm gonna put income, I'm gonna put nine to five job and other. Other can literally be like anything else that you earn money from eBay, maybe a side hustle, anything like that. We'll put investments in here. And what I'm gonna do here is just put SNS, ISA, stocks, and crypto. Obviously these actual headings, tailor them to your actual finances and you don't have to copy this directly. In expenses, I'm gonna put in living as one category, but for you, you might want to split this into like rent, bills, council tax, if these things vary month on month. Like in subscriptions, fees, travel, and just have one for me, have one for me. And then I'm actually also gonna add in some total rows as well. And then you're gonna wanna pop in your savings account. For me, they're kind of sinking funds. They are different accounts that I actually contribute to on a monthly basis. So I'm gonna have emergency fund. So I contribute to a fund fund, but then I also have fund spending. So these ones kind of net out sometimes. <laughs> We're also gonna do a monthly total, just so it's easier to look at quickly. So we're just gonna put in a formula here. So we're just gonna link to So in the budget tab, you're gonna wanna put in your budgets for every month. So your ideal version of what you basically want your finances to look like. So I'm just gonna put in a random amounts. Oh my God, 200 pounds for my day job would not be great. And we're also gonna total the actual yearly activity as well. And you can basically just drag this down all the way. To just gonna delete the totals in this tab because I'm neurotic. And then also some, so it gave me a prediction there, so I just pressed enter and then. For investments and savings, I've just put in the ideal amount that I'd like to be putting towards these every month. So. And here's where you can actually just make a few more you know, ambitious goals. So if you're planning on getting a promotion or a new job in a certain month, you know, put that new expected salary in, really challenge yourself to create a picture of what it would look like if you stuck to a budget or increased your savings or something like that and use this time to kind of motivate yourself. I'm actually just gonna add a leftover tab here. 
And here we're literally just gonna take everything away from our income. Even though your investments and your savings are not really being spent, they are being kept aside. I do like to take this away to then see what you have left over every month because it's this kind of money that's left over that you can then allocate to maybe bumping up your emergency fund, maybe increasing your stocks and shares ISA contribution. And so once you've basically done this budgeting tab, we're gonna copy it. We're gonna paste it into actuals and we are going to delete all the information that's not in a totals box basically. So I'm holding down command as I select everything I've typed in. So now we've basically got an empty template of the budget tab and this whole tab is formula driven. We're gonna link through to our cash flow tab and the cash flow tab is where you will paste all your bank transactions. So you might wanna mold this to how your statement looks like when it's downloaded. So my statement has the date in the first column, a description of the spending in the second column and the amount spent in the third column. And then we're gonna add a fourth column called category. You want these to match the categories of expenses and investments and sinking funds that you have in your budget tab. So that's why you want to kind of customize this budget tab as to your spending. So what I'm gonna do is copy each category here. Go into cash flow and just go into the side here. I'm just gonna paste that into a little list. Budget categories. Here is basically where you'll paste all of your transactions. So on this tab is where the formula can get a little bit long. So what we're gonna do is equals sum ifs. And we're gonna go to cash flow and we're gonna highlight the amount column. We're gonna go comma, we're gonna go into date, comma, we're gonna go back into actuals and we're gonna click the the cell that the date is in. We're gonna press comma again. We're gonna go back into the cash flow tab highlight the category column, comma again, and then go back to the actuals column and then click on the cell that the actual category is in. So here I'm gonna click on nine to five job and then close. And it will say zero just now because there is nothing in the cash flow column. But when we drag this formula into every other cell, we want the date to stay the same for all the January months. So what we're gonna do is click on B1 and I'm on a MacBook so I'm going on FNF4 uh, or you could just type a dollar sign before the B and before the 1 and that will just make sure that the cell that Jan is written in will always be selected when we drag this formula down and then we want to do the same thing to all the references to the cash flow tabs so here we're gonna FNF4, FNF4 and FNF4 so basically the only thing we want moving when we do drag this cell down is the actual reference to the category so we want the category to match the row that the formula is in. So when I drag this down now, you'll see that nothing has changed except the reference to the other cell. And you'll just have to repeat this for each month because you'll have to keep changing the cell to match the category and month tab. So for example, when we move this across, it's going to move all the references across. So now it's referring to this zero instead of this tag. So what we're just going to do, we're just going to change this to A3 and we're just going to change this to C1. Everything is going to be driven by this formula tab. Now just to show you what will happen if I basically pretend that I've filled this out. As you can see here, it has pulled the amounts related to this category and this month in this cell. And because of the formula driven totals just here, you can see it's totaling up. Now we've got a summary sheet that will hopefully just give us a good picture if we just want to quickly check on our budget to see how we we're doing. So what I like to do is have a budget v actuals summary. Right. Equals and we'll go into budget and we'll get the total for the year. So total income for the year is here. No. Good because I'm comparing a yearly month to an actual so what I'm actually just going to do for the purposes of showing you guys how this works is just delete the data in the budget tab so what you can do if you want is budget the next month during the month that you're budgeting so doing a month by month budget instead so for the summary tab we're going to take away our budget from our actual just so we can see like if we're up or down on the goals we created at the beginning of the year so actually I'm just going to go into the cash flow and just change this to like 2000 
anymore. So here we can see we're up on our income. We're 450 pounds down on our budgeted investments. We're 660 pounds down on our expenses, which is a good thing. And then we're also 120 pounds down on our savings, which is a bad thing. We have got 1,430 pounds more than we budgeted to spend and play around with at the end of the month. So obviously you can make this look super pretty if you want to get more into it, like add some colors, make the tables look a bit nicer. A really nice formula that you can put is just put if open bracket each amount is positive or negative it's a good thing or a bad thing just i don't know if it's going to motivate you or demotivate you we're going to put the formula that we're looking for so if it's less than zero we're going to put oh no and then if it's not less than zero so a good thing we're gonna put yay and then close bracket for the expenses one you actually want that to be greater than zero for it to be a good thing so we're gonna actually flip the alligator sign around and that's a really like cute little thing you can do at the end but it does help and now every month all you need to do is go into the cash flow tab and paste in your transactions and for the whole month just paste april into the date column just so that the formula picks up the month really clearly because it the month has to match the month that we've got at the top of our table here and then you just need to manually go in and categorize each line for your categories here. So if you've got more categories of spending, add more categories in this thing here. Or if you've got less, just remove them. That's a super easy way to streamline your budgeting process, get a really cool summary of your goals. And if you're keeping on track, this is the absolute basic that you need to do every month. In my opinion, if you make it fancier, you run the risk of getting overwhelmed by it and not wanting to do it every month because it's another task that you have to do. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. I hope you found this video useful and that it was a really easy way to set up a really simple budgeting finance tracker on Google Sheets. If you do set this up let me know how you get on and also if you have any shortcuts to make any of these moves smoother or to cut down time pasting in formulas and all that kind of jazz leave a comment down below with the shortcut in it while there are a lot of similarities between google sheets and excel i use windows a lot for when i am using excel so i don't know the most shortcuts so yeah drop them down below if you do know any that will streamline this process even more but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you next week bye